everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Super Split Screen Brothers. I am Nick. This this is uh, Jared over here. Uh, this is always, you know. How you yeah. doing, buddy? I'm doing extremely well. It's a glorious Monday morning. <laughs> My computer decided this like this is a perfect time to do something stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah. Um, uh, it's been a it's been a very eventful uh, weekend for me. I uh, I launched some stuff. I did a book signing. It was really good. But there's one thing on my mind. What you been playing, Leia? Well, I haven't played some games, but I did participate in Free Comic Book Day because those of you that, that know me know that every month I go to the comic store and I spend like over one hundred dollars on comic books. But uh, so I, I, I figured I would go. My store had like everything 25% off. So I was like, I might as well just go then. So uh, I don't want to go through like every single book book I purchased, but I did pick up A Death in the Family and then Under the Red Hood. So I have the entire like Ooh. Ace and Todd death and rebirth story. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I also got the graphic novel of Justice League New Frontier and they captured the Darwin Cook art style in that really well. So there was that. I, I got a, a couple of other stuff, but yeah, I've been I've been going through that. I read a little bit of the um, Dawn of DC Green Arrow run, which is pretty good. I like that. Mm. And in terms of what games I have been playing when I have been playing games, I played Injustice a lot. A friend of mine who's really into fighting games finally beat me as Wonder Woman. So I don't know. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> Well, and I'm like, okay, one out of 200 lo losses. Yeah, you're in good shape. But, uh, but uh, and I saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and I enjoyed it. It was a pretty, it was definitely one of the better phase, phase, whatever the hell phase we're on right now, um, in terms of, like, uh, of the most recent Marvel movies. It's one of the best. And that's what I've been playing. What about you, Nick? Uh, well, as for myself, uh, I purchased Resident Evil 2 Remake, and I've been uh, trying that out. It's actually pretty good, I, I gotta say. Mm -hmm. um, like, it's it's not, like, uh, I was kind of wary of Resident Evil because, like, like, the, like, the jump care, scare stuff, but I gotta say, this remake is it's pretty good. It's got, like, kind of, like, a spooky atmosphere that I'm loving. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really good. I've been enjoying it. Other than that, I... Resub to World of Warcraft and playing uh, Rav Classic kind of solo. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be playing that. The grind's kind of getting to me. But, like, yeah, Resident Evil 2 is really great. I, too, uh, did free comic book day. And I actually have my hauls right here. So Let's see it. I, oh, I it's it's yeah. a little blurry. Turn the blur off. Oh, Animal Crossing. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it off just for a second. Uh, just to make it easier, but I'll, I'll turn it back on. All right. Yeah, okay. So cool. now you can see me and see me in 4K. Well, not really, but like. Nice. So, uh, Animal Crossing, uh, this next one everyone's going to love. Yeah, uh, Turtles. Nice. Oh. A little bit of a spoiler there. And then, um, yeah, uh, this one. I didn't realize they had RuneScape comics. Really? That that's a yeah. that's a so, flashback, dude. Oh yeah, I actually still play old school RuneScape from time to time. It's it's a kind of a good time waster. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, in terms of my indie, uh, in terms of my actual free comics that I picked up, you actually inspired me. I might as well just show this off. I got yeah. the Dawn of DC one because I'm a huge fan of Jason Fabok, and you got that kick-ass cover. I got nice. Conan. Ooh. I got this Zom 100. It's a manga comic that you read backwards. So that's, I uh, read left to right. So that's kind of weird for me. Yeah, that's most of them. Yeah. Spider Man Venom. Mm. Uncanny Avengers. And then this one called the Irate Verse, or how, however, the, I, I'm having a little trouble re reading that script, but there you go. They let me uh, uh, so my store was like uh, was like only allowing like you to, to pick up five comics per person, but but the dude that was like bagging them snuck th this into my bag. So I was like, okay, <laughs> thank you. breaking the rules. You're a rebel now. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it, it, yeah. Seems 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 like you uh, you had a good time with some comics. Mm -hmm. I did. You I know, did. So, you know, there the, there there are other uh, comics in play. Uh, that, like I'm I'm really bad at the segue. I got it. You know who's not having a good way with comics is IDW. Oh <laughs> no 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 no! Uh, you're a little bit ahead of the game here. All right. Oh yeah. So, well, first so, off. Yeah. Let's yell some samurai. It's a bit of an awkward segue, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, all right, all right. All right, so so uh, we launched this on Friday on Gary's channel. Thank you, buddy. Anytime. And and uh, yeah, we're off to a really good start. We are officially on day, day three or four. Uh, I think it's like still... four, I think. I think four. We're yeah, four, four sounds about right. I, I'm a little bit groggy, um, you know, kind of late. So, yeah, uh, we're on day four. And we're already at 40% funded, so thank you guys so freaking much. Um, yeah. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't uh, seen this book, it's basically a manga-inspired book where a samurai feel Japan. Yes. Yes, yeah, shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot for the hip, brother. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that Nick will put the the link to to back this project in the, the description. So be be sure to check that out. Hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, this is very kind of cyberpunk adventure. Here's the uh, cover by Zevius. Oh dear God. He did such a good job on it. Yeah, that's such a great cover. And uh, yep. So so uh, so Jared, uh, I I I, uh, I wanted to inform you as one of the two amazingly awesome people that backed the Blood and Steel edition. I will I will be announcing a there's a new edition to that, which there will be a print of the cover of Zeus's cover. Signed by both him and me. I may need to to, 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 to now start a Zevious wall at this point. <laughs> oh, you need to get him to do some stuff for your comic. I'll, I'll he is, he is. Right now I want to get more work done on the back end of the comic before I start, like, adding up all the stuff. Because I want him to, to, to make his time worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. So, yep. Uh, so, so we get some, uh, some really good stuff. And then... Uh, before I move on, uh, let's kind of just play the trailer for people and uh, mm -hmm. get get her. Yep. Yeah. Wait, buffering. Thank you. No problem. So before we move on to the next topic, he's back. Oh, oh! Here. I thought I thought it was getting a bit warm in here. Yeah, it was. What's up, dude? Flame on. What's up? How you doing? <laughs> doing pretty well. So, uh, Jay Heat, real quick, what have you been playing or interacting with media wise? Well, I have been playing Batman: The Telltale Series. I've been doing a playthrough on my channel, which you can find in the link below. Hopefully, I remember to add it, but um, hold on. Sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. What Nick will probably do is he'll put the link to your channel in the d description of the video. Oh, Appreciate I it. I will. I'll go ahead and um, add these two. Just give me a moment. Yeah, Keep talking okay. while I set this up. So anyway, uh, 
So let's go. Uh, actually, while he does that, let's move on to the topic. So in the news, IDW is falling apart because uh, they got delisted from the stock exchange. And I think they're close to or have already declared bankruptcy, which that's a problem for a company that is primarily known for licensing other people's products. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's not good. Plus they've been losing key licenses, like the laws of transformers license. Yeah. Um, I think Star, they have Wars. Lost Star Wars, I believe it. Well, well no, uh, uh, dark horse was the one. Who, the dark one horse was Star Wars. Wars. Okay. So, uh, and that was a few one. years, that was a few years ago. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think they lost the GI Joe license, which are both Hasbro. But but yeah, it's it's not. Oh. The Oni Press, I remember, uh, it had some trouble a few years back. They've been limping on since then. Oni Press are the people who publish Scott Pilgrim. I think okay. that's probably like their biggest thing. And Oni is also the Office of Naval Intelligence from Halo, so that's a fun thing there. So, and fun fact, <laughs> Oni was an early Bungie game before they did Halo. Just wanted to bring you on to that one. But so I think that was like a launch title for the PS2. It was one of them, I think. So this is sort of my idea, and we want to talk talk about this. As the larger topic that we're that we're going for is the fall of indie. Now, Nick, do you wanna real quick? There's a caveat here when we talk about indie comics. Nick, do you wanna yes. give him a yes. caveat? So we're not talking about like the smaller people such as myself, Jared. The ones who do like the like primarily do crowdfunding campaigns and whatnot. We're talking about uh, indie. It's just we're trying to keep it simple. Like we want to kind of like a short kind of like phrase for people like the the uh, the non Marvel and DC, but there's still big companies like Dark Horse, Boom, Dynamite, IDW. Those are who we're referring to as indie. Just just so, just so we're clear. Yeah. The thing about it going back is that here's the thing. I think it's going to be harder for these companies to like bounce back like IDW because here's the thing. Ultimately, like Image and IDW and like Dark Horse, generally, I'm talking about general audience, don't have recognizable IPs. It's not like you have they have like Superman or Batman. No, they have like Bloodshot or I mean the. I mean, here's the thing. The only one that, that, that they kind of did was like Sonic, Ninja Turtles and such. But again, those even, those even aren't their IPs. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is that that's the problem with a lot of these companies is that they don't have IPs that the general audience. Obviously, we know who like the Wildcats are and Young Blood. Yeah. We're familiar with them. But the general audience that doesn't read comic books, like you, I can't go down uh, down my street and ask someone... Who is, uh, who's Bloodshot? Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think the main problem is, like, they used to have Transformers for a while. It's just, IDW, they're not really relevant when it comes to the general audience zeitgeist. They're just not relevant. They've hardly ever been relevant. Their mm -hmm. heyday was mostly the 80s and 90s. Maybe oh. the 2000s. I just feel like they've lost relevance. And if they don't do something original or branch out more with their marketing budget, they're going to fall the test of time. That's just the, the truth of it. Well, here's the thing also. I was watching a, a, a video by my good friend Wes for, for, from Thinking Critical. <laughs> and what he said is that the problem is, is that the, particularly for IDW, it's tough because guess what? IDW doesn't have their, uh, again, I keep harping on this point. IDW even further, it, beyond having not like original IPs, uh, not having recognizable IPs, IDW has become so dependent on other people's stuff like Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that they haven't really taken the time to develop their original IPs. And honestly, I don't think they can at this point. That is true. That is true because Archie Comics technically is not his own thing. It's a spinoff. Mm -hmm. It has its well, own no, kind. Archie, Archie Comics is Archie Comics. That's a whole other like, yeah, it's a whole other thing. That, that's their own thing, yeah. Fun fact, I was reading Archie's before I read Superheroes. I believe yeah, it. That, at the grocery store, they had the digests, which were like at the uh, where the magazines are. So I would always grab one. I, I had a bunch of them at one point. But um, see, and that's the issue there because it's like the, the and, and that's the thing because he, 
obviously these indie companies try to have their IPs become more like mainstream, like with the Bloodshot movie and such. But I mean, they have to make a good movie. <laughs> And they have to put people uh, because here's the thing: a lot of indie comics movies. Spawn is arguably a fantastic movie, but we, we, but we talked about this in the past stream. But my point is that a lot of these movies aren't good enough to uh, gain mainstream attention. That is true. That and you is need true. a good movie in order for the general audience to latch on to the character, at least the character, because then if they see like an, a bloodshot book and like. Barnes and Noble or such, they're more likely to go, oh, I saw a movie about that. Maybe I should check that out. Yeah, Spawn is kind of an outlier because it, it actually was like a really popular character. Like you gotta realize back in the back in the early 90s, Spawn was kicking butt, like it was rivaling Mar like it was it was yes. rivaling Marvel and DC for sales numbers. And it's it's sold gangbusters. Spawn was the most popular of the original founders image books. Hands down. Hands mm -hmm. down. Like seriously, other than Spawn, who else remembers like Young Blood? You know, uh, Savage Dragon is really only remembered by certain people. It's 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 it's, it's, it's yeah. The only it's a product why, of its time, basically. The only reason why I knew Wildcats for a long time is because I was a huge Jim Lee fan, and uh, I have his art book, and he talks about his time on Wildcats in there. But even Pretty I much. was like, what? But but yeah, it's like I knew who Spawn was because. My dad and I had, because previous to me even getting into comics, I used to get the McFarlane Halo action figures, and I was on the website. I would see the Spawn character, and first off, I thought, well, that's a pretty badass design, and that's the other thing that, that Todd McFarlane had. I think Spawn has the most badass design. Plus, here's what Todd McFarlane did. He made his version of Batman the most popular comic book character. Because that's the thing. Batman ultimately, Batman Spider-Man always vacillated for the most powerful comic book character, but... That's the thing. He identified what people liked as a Batman-like character, and he made his version of that. And honestly, he made it different enough so it's not a ripoff. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah. you, you, you gotta love Todd. <laughs> yeah, he's he's definitely an original thinker, and he's uh he's done he's done stuff that uh he's really he's really an innovator, uh, not just in the comic space but also the toy space. <laughs> well, I have his DC stuff right up there. Like, I think if it wasn't for Todd doing what he did in the 90s, we wouldn't have stuff like Hot Toys. We wouldn't have, like... No. Um, we would have, like, the Hasbro Legends. For those of you that, that that are interested, there's this fantastic documentary on YouTube on the Sci-Fi... Uh, I, I think Sci-Fi uh, ch channel's page, and they did, like, a documentary on Todd McFarlane. And what's cool about it is... Um, is um it, it goes into because he looked at because he wanted to make spawn toys he was getting approached by like kenner hasbro and all these things but if you look at the action figures of the time they sucked yeah they're basically they're basically still kind of stuck in like the the 70s and 80s kind of stuff like and todd was like screw you i'm gonna do this myself and then i went to say it was failed and then he made characters he made figures that actually looked like the characters well not only that but like uh, like yeah, Todd was was really was really an innovator with like really good molds, but also the the Todd toys had really good articulation. Oh yes, I, I was really for the most part the Halo guys. You could recreate all the poses from the game with just the articulation, and, and they kept getting better when you went from Halo Three to Halo Reach to Halo Four. Like I, I re like I think it's I think I I I I don't think this is much of a hot take. Todd created the premium figure market. Yeah, he did. He, li he literally created it. Yep. With that, without without Can't deny without uh, without Todd McFarlane, you wouldn't have Jared's addiction that is Hot Toys. Yeah, they, uh, my collection. Thanks you, Todd McFarlane. Y you have a problem, Jared. There's no such thing as a problem when it comes to collecting toys. <laughs> can we please can we please block edit that out, please? Because that just sounds weird in context. Yeah, <laughs> Nick is not. It, it, this is Nick's channel. It's not my channel. What are you talking about? And, and, uh, and watch. In the editing, I'll put a banner. 
no, I will not edit this out. Yes, exactly. You, no, you should do that. But but the thing is, is that it is, and that's the that's the thing. That's why Todd has thrived while these other companies have th- have like struggled because they didn't innovate enough. Todd is constantly innovating. It, 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 um, sometimes you could see like his changes sometimes don't work for like the toys or the or the comics. But regardless, the dude is always trying to adapt. Where. If IDW were smart, they should have, in addition to having the licensed product, they should have been pursuing creator-owned stuff. Because otherwise, if something like what happens happens where they start losing IP licenses, guess what? They're crippled. The company is crippled at this point. Yeah, at least Dark Horse has stuff like Hellboy to fall back on. Yeah, D- Dark Horse has creative own stuff. Image has creator or creator own stuff, and Image j- just does creator own stuff mostly. So I'm like, okay, that. Well, that's I think honestly, I think Image, the thing that keeps Image going nowadays is uh, the Robert Kirkman stuff. Is uh, is uh, Ro- you know, Robert Kirkman is kind of like miniature universe inside of Image. Because remember, uh, Walking Dead is an Image comic. Mm-hmm. And I've told Invincible the story about how he tricked comic. them. I told the story about how Kirkman tricked them into green lighting Walking Dead. It's such a great story. But also, here, here's the thing about um, about Image as opposed to IDW. Image has more recognizable talent because you got like Donny Cates, Jeff Johns, Jason Fabok, uh, who, who else? Um, Greg Capullo, Scott Snyder. Who do you have at IDW really? Not many. Exactly you my have, point. You have- you, uh, you have Heather Antos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. And then they make Heather Antos the overseer of all of their uh, licensed products. So I'm like, at what point do you just decide that she's just horrible at her job? And and this is not me m- making a, a like judgment. This is her work history talking for it because she's gone from job to job to job because she keeps failing. Yeah, I will say I have like talked to some people who have met her at conventions. And apparently she does, she is like a nice person, very bubbly and outgoing. Sure she is. Um, so um, I, I don't want to consider this as a personal attack. Apparently Mm-mm. in person, she's like a very lovely person. I'm sure she but, is. I, I've seen her in, in interviews and she is pretty nice in interviews. By the way, do you know that she applied to DC and Jim Lee turned her down because of her role in the Whisper Network? Not surprised. Huh. So I'm like, that's why I'm like, okay, Jim Lee knows how to make some good creative, uh, some good business decisions. I mean, you got to realize, like, Jim's been around for a while. Yeah, and he's like, no, absolutely not. But that's just really, uh, that's really my two cents on this. Because here's the thing. Uh, I think that, now, the, the question stands, do you guys think it's too late for IDW? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know. It, it's just. Uh, it's a good indie market or a good indie publisher, but whether or not it's going to sell gangbusters like it did back in the '90s, I think it's heydays beyond them. But it is a good indie type. It is a good indie publisher at the very least, because you need more content other than the big two. I mean, hell, they did a great job w- with the last Ronin, and they're c- coming out with pre- with prequel and sequel comics to that. That's TMNT, though. Well, yeah, see, yeah. See, the problem is, is we have these companies like like Boom, Dynamite, IW, who literally have built their brand off of just licensing properties, and that might be fine. But we're kind of heading into a contracting market in terms of like the, the big stuff, and there might not be that kind of uh, money to throw around in terms of like licensing comics and whatnot. So I, I just, I don't know. Um, but, but, but here's the other thing also that was the the other piece of like a little bit of news that that I, I I figure we could turn to a topic is a lot of celebrities have started trying their hand at being comic book writers like uh, there was like Amelia Clark tried that horrible idea for a comic book and re- recently Goldberg try is trying it out with a menopausal superhero. The thing is they keep tr- uh... here's the thing here's the here's why this stuff keeps failing. you ready? They keep trying their ideas. They're so creatively bankrupt that they have to pick ideas that no one that's for a very extremely niche audience. I I, I really want to say that they're just trying to go for shock value. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, but because why know, else the, would you do this? 
Why else? Uh, it's either that or they're morons. Uh, or here's why, Jay Heat. I'll answer it. They want a Netflix deal because look. Who is the plot? Who is announcing these comic book writers? It's, it's like celebrities that don't have much of a career anymore because with Amelia Clark, Game of Thrones ended. She was in a crappy Terminator movie, so she needs. Uh, so she figures, okay, if this is popular, I can get a, I can get basically get get a Mark Millar deal and uh, with with Netflix and get my own uh, universe and then make money that way. But once again, you're picking too niche uh, a market. You're like menopausal superheroes. Okay, that's not gonna work. Also, I, I do want to say, like Amelia <laughs> Clark, she seems like actually a very lovely person. Oh, uh, oh yeah, uh, she, she and she would make a fantastic Mara. Hint, hint. Yes, uh, this Mara would definitely wouldn't crap the bed. Mm -hmm. Can go. we please keep the turret jokes to a minimum, please? Hey, uh, I'm, this I'm is Phoenix right Press. Now. This, this is Phoenix Press, baby. You know. Oh, and Jay Heat. Also, what <laughs> There you go. That was just mean. Okay. Give him enough, give him enough off guard. Okay. Where is that one? Oh, yeah. It's not in my account. Oh, I thought I sent it to you. No, you didn't. Oh. But anyway, but... No, but mom's gone. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. How's this? How's this? I regret nothing! There you go. All right. So. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. So with Goldberg, th the thing about this is that also, yeah, Amelia Clark is probably a nice person. Most likely a, a, a nice person. I don't know her, so I don't really know. I haven't had any interactions. I'm sure Go Whoopi Goldberg is nice when you actually, like, interact with her as opposed to watch her on the view but the thing is they're banking too much on their stuff Th these celebrities think they're more famous than they actually are yeah they not all of them are keanu reeves keanu reeves look he picked a product that everyone likes an action movie about an immortal warrior and guess what? That's why it exploded so much. He he didn't necessarily have to rely on I'm Keanu Reeves. He goes, I co-wrote this th this product that's basically an action story that applies to everyone. And there you go. Like, like let's be honest. A big reason why it did so well is because it was Keanu Reeves. Let's well, let's yeah. be honest here. And the character happens to look like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> like that's probably the only time where where we're having like the the comic book series and Netflix pitch actually worked like that like that is the exception mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a fair point that's a fair point yeah but i mean hey i'm, I'm pulling up a, a picture of it and tell me this doesn't look like keanu reeves hang on uh present just give me one second people tell me this doesn't look like keanu reeves that looks like keanu the reeves, keanu reeves. I know that that's partly why he made his original character look like him. So you feel like you're just watching another Keanu Reeves movie, but in comic book form. Didn't Pretty they, much. Uh, didn't they, um, i to think here. Didn't they, uh, even recreate like the sandwich bench meme or something? I think something so. Like that, I think, I, I think they did. Yeah. But the point is they banked on what people know about him, not just the, the fact that it's Keanu Reeves and look what happened. It blew up. Yeah, it blew and up big, thing. big time. Not once in the marketing did, did he go, oh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm Keanu Reeves, and I'm gonna write a comic book. It's not, he, he's like, no, he, here's my character. He, I think he's pretty cool and stuff. So, so he, he never once like said, look at me. Well, that's just Keanu Reeves because he's so awesome. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like, and, and look what happened. You treat your customer, you, you treat it, you treat it like you're not above your customers. Look what happens. Oh my God, what a crazy concept. Realistically, he will probably get a Netflix deal for that. Mm -hmm. Which I would so watch a Berserker movie. Like, oh, geez. Same here. Directed by Zack Snyder. I'm sorry, I had to put that in there. I had to put that in well, there. Well, he, he is contracted with Netflix. Honestly, and plus the IP, I could see him doing that. But uh, doing Imagine it, if they actually IP. do announce it. Like, after Rebel Moon, his next project is Berserker. That would be hilarious. A, a, a Zack Snyder film starring Keanu Reeves, like, oh boy, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. 
I can't just imagine Zach like Je- Zach Snyder and Keanu Reeves working like two of the nicest people in Hollywood. Like, and yeah, then you well, have, like, Keanu way. Reeves, Keanu Reeves come out and say, "Oh man, working with Zach Snyder was so great." I think I froze. Yeah, you did. But l- let me put it to you this way: Here's the internet when th- when that gets announced, Nick. Now's a good time to be aroused. Right, that did you, not uh, age well. That can you remove well. me and then put me back in the show? Maybe that'll refresh it. Sure. Are oh, you still frozen? There. All right, there you go. Uh, so yeah, but that that's the point there. So, I mean, so what do you guys think? And I'll, I'll move n- Nick back in the host position. <laughs> that's a, okay. That's a fair point. Now, to be, am I gonna call? Okay, to call for what it is. Superheroes are trending right now, or at the very least, when it comes to mainstream audience and TV de- TV slash streaming deals. Is this just a publicity stunt gone awry? Probably, but at the end of the day, if you have a market, if you care about making money, you got to put in more effort than the occasional TV deal or just a commissioned hack here and there. That that's just what I think. Mm-hmm. They could they could do a lot more. They could, yeah, because yeah, the thing about Berserker is it actually had effort put into it. That is true. Plus, That's you also true. had like Ron Garney on art. You you had some killer creatives on that book. You did, and it looks good. That and remember, it almost I think it out it outsold like EVS's stuff. I mm. think, and and that and that takes a lot because EVS makes a bank on crowdfunding. Oh yeah, he he does at least a couple hundred k per. Like I think. Berserker got like a couple mil. Mm-hmm. It's almost yeah. Like, like, mm-hmm. l- like I said, like like I said, you had the killer combination of Keanu Reeves, who's a really hot hot uh, actor right now. He's really popular. Um, it turned it's a, it's a, it's a good comic book to begin with. So you got that. So it's, it's kind of like the perfect storm. And it's the start of a new universe. So it's not like you have to read all this other BS in order to get caught up. So it's like, yeah, literally everything was in Keanu's corner. Yeah. So it, yeah, it was, it was, it was, that's it an was interview. Well That'd be pretty cool to get on comics league. Keanu Reeves <laughs> and Nick. Yes. If I get Keanu Reeves in the comics league, you are going to be uh, in that interview. Yeah. Like uh, if you didn't, uh, yeah, no, um, there's, there's no freaking way that like you are not interviewing Neo without the, Yes, Neo. Uh, I'll, I'll put his name as Neo. But, but but anyway, but um, and just just watch like uh, all of a sudden you, you get like a ding inbox and it's like a video file and it's like you know like like this is this is Keanu Reeves and, and you're watching Comics League. Yeah, well, what I'm gonna do is uh, if that ever happens, I'll make an intro for him like I have for you guys. It'll just be Agent Smith going, Mister Anderson. Uh, well, if it was me, I would be I would be doing the I'm thinking I'm back from from John oh, Wick. That works way better. I, actually, I, I like that one. But anyway, we need to, to cover this. we need to cover the John Wick film the movie night. Sometime. Oh hell yes, hell! Uh, by the way, John Wick that needs a comic book. Yes, I think there I think there is. There should be. But um, on that po- so on that point, so. What do you guys think the future lo- looks like for these companies in general, as opposed to just IDW? Rough waters ahead. Yeah. Particularly in light of like all these, because they're particularly in light of a perceived superhero fatigue. I could see. Yeah. I could see things. Okay, the market has just expanded since then, but I could definitely see them making a comeback. If need be, like it, it's going to be it's going to take a lot of effort going forward. But I think if they really took the time or at least they want to make money, they'll do it. True. Yeah. Yeah, the, the other point is, because remember, we have another example of this going wrong, because remember, Valiant Entertainment like imploded and that was like all original IP, all superhero IP. So, well, pretty much all superhero IP, but it like it <sighs> literally like imploded. That's more of a crash and burn type scenario because mm-hmm. they weren't they were trying too hard to compete with the big two. You're not hit, you're not hitting those quotas. It's just not going to happen. Interestingly enough, another company Heather Antos worked for. 
Well, that was also a factor, but I'm not. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. gonna name names. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But um, what do you think? Is but l- let me ask you this: If you, what are the steps that you guys, particularly you, Nick, as an indie comics creator, except the better one in my mind, uh, what are some of the steps if you were in charge of these companies? What would you do immediately to turn this around? Starting with uh, Nick. Well, um, I would I would um not have hired someone with a bad uh, track record. I'm I'm trying to be gra- I'm trying to be gracious about it, honestly. Mm-hmm. She's she's probably a very nice person from what I've seen. She's a very nice person. We're, we're just saying her workability in, in these positions. She she hasn't worked in a job where it, it was a good fit in terms of like the, the the audience perception. Yeah. But anyway, so Jay Heat, what would you do? Um, as for me, I would just t- kind of like trim the fad because this because this market is more of an opportunity for rising artists and writers to show their shine, show they can really do. If they don't make the cut, you just gotta let you just gotta lay the hammer on them. You're just not making the cut. We're decided to go in a new direction. Thank you for trying out. You, you just weren't do, you just weren't putting in the numbers, kid. But keep trying, put in the good work, and maybe you'll get you'll get another shot. You just gotta trim the fat. In situations like this, you just have to trim the fat. Yeah. Um, Quality like, matters. Yeah, like not not do not have your flagship turtles book. You invent a uh, fifth female turtle, and all of a sudden the book is all about them. Yeah, I know that doesn't work. That that, that was really weird. Wait, wasn't that our fifth turtle in one of the early cartoons? And there was the a Power Rangers turtle... crossover. No, no, it was the uh, so. I don't know if people realize this, but there was a, a live-action turtle TV show done by Saban around, and the tur- Ninja Turtles: The Next Mutation, mm-hmm. and that—that's what the crossover was based off of. It was based off of the Next Mutation. Okay. Like people okay. think it was just like come came out of nowhere, but no, like Saban actually had a turtle show at that time. Okay, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, so uh, I mean. For me personally, I would start like trying to get more recognizable talent, not just like good writers, but just recognizable ones, because then you get like the name recognition. Like, let's say Scott Snyder went to write for IDW. Then you get the Scott Snyder fans, but you also get like, like, oh, wow, they got they got Scott Snyder. I almost said Zack Snyder. They got Scott Snyder to to write a book for IDW. That's big. Let's go check that out. Definitely. I think that's a fair point. I definitely think that's a fair point. I mean, imagine uh imagine if they if they if you know the dream team was Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo. And don't oh, go yeah. for and don't always go for star power because DC did that, not knowing or not understanding that Bendis had fallen way off since twenty ten. Or not wanting to 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 like mm. accept it. Oh, I, I gotta I, okay, this, this I just wanna say this. Imagine if they did a Spawn book written by Scott Snyder and then drawn by Drake Capullo. Ooh, I can I like see that. that. I can see that. I can see that, actually. Yeah, so, um, I mean, complicated scenario, at least I think, and... There's no, like, one solution to this because it's a complicated scenario. But he- here's the thing. The the market is primed for a Marvel DC alternative. So these companies have an opportunity because a lot of people are pissed off at Marvel and DC. So these companies they, can't, can't afford to piss off the, the audience. They can't. They can't. They, yeah, they really can't. But uh, so, I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But so, Nick... Your thoughts? I know I kind of took over as host. I apologize for that, but uh, your it, it's fine. It, it's fine. I'm a bit distracted today, so it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. By the way, guys, so, uh, I just want to do real quick. Uh, I just want to pr- pr- promote a friend of ours, if that's okay with, with Nick, our friend Snyder Queen. She does fantastic work. Just wanted to yes, promote please, that. please, by all means. Yes. So if you guys like fan edits, she does really high quality stuff. In fact, any of those that have enjoyed my fan edits know that I use her as inspiration. So drop her a link in the chat. Yeah, I, I will. All right, I will. So let me just do that. And yeah, so. 
so in the in the meantime, I mean, okay, so, so we'll, yeah, we'll, so yeah, yeah let's uh let's uh kind of wrap this up and we'll, let's go let's have some fun. Uh, so Jay Heat. We've been talking about indies. Uh, what are your fo- top five Wait. indie books? Real quick, real quick. There you go. Okay, I have Spawn, Screecher, Samurai 8. This is Samurai 2100. 20, 20, and <laughs> that's three. So what's... Water will get you everywhere, my friend. TMNT, <laughs> because it's technically an indie title, it just gets licensed around a lot. And for a number five, huh. The old Dark Horse, dark, the old Star Wars Dark Horse comics, because those were pretty good. Yeah. It, before they got bought off by Marvel, but uh, yeah, I think the Dark Horse was pretty good. As you, Jared. Mine are Spawn, Screecher, Twenty One Hundred. Oh, you guys uh, are really laying it on thick. Yeah, exactly. Cyber Frog. And, oh, that's uh, a good one. That's a yeah. good honorable mention. Yeah, I love that. And uh, let's see, what's an, what's the uh, other good one? Ah, uh, screw it. Thin Blue Line by Mike Barron. Mm, I can see the potential. I can see the potential. Because I like law enforcement stories, and that is basically one of those. <laughs> and they, there you go. Because love Mike Barron. And Mike, if you're watching, really enjoyed interviewing you. Yep. So uh, for me, I would say, yes, Spawn's definitely on that list. Um, saving the world by Conic Mole. I I love that oh, dude yeah, so much. That's an honorable f- for for me because that was so good. Yep, and then uh, let's see here, Hellboy. Um, Ooh. also, also, um, I I gotta give it. You know, Jay, you you you, you have great taste. The the Dark Horse Star Wars. Uh, what am I? What number am I at? I think you you're did... on three. You're on okay. three. All right, and then uh, the next one would be. Whew, I, I need to read, read more indie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll keep it at that. Okay, that's fine. But uh, and dr- drop in the comments, guys, what you think your favorite indie comics are. You can't beyond Twenty One Hundred Samurai or anything done by, by the Phoenix Press because we obviously know you're going to be biased. Oh, I have one more to add. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thun- Thunder Goddess. Why <laughs> it's called Athena, Goddess of Thunder now. That's the title. And yeah, if from I, I haven't even released it and it's already on his list, which I appreciate that, dude. But don't worry. We're working on it. It's, it's is- literally it's literally the best indie book ever. Thank you. But and uh, Dawson is churning out that that uh, those awesome character designs. Once we're done with the character designs, like as soon as I get the character designs for Athena done, that's when I'll reach out to to Zevius to if Steve wants to do a variant cover because she's the main character and I want her to be featured prominently on a variant cover. So I'm waiting until I get like her design like ha- like solidify before uh, before I start that process. And that should be ready soon. Again, we're still doing, we're still getting. The, the, once we get the character designs done, I'm about halfway done with chapter two script, and it's gonna be like, like four chapters for, for book one, and then we'll uh, we'll update you guys l- 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 um, later on Comics League. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So, uh, do, do you want to do s- s- um, a self promo and then we'll r- r- wrap us up, Nick? Well, I, I already did. Uh, I already did uh, mine. So. Okay, on Comics League, I have a, a video that's out like right now. That's um, I took the scene of John Kent from Man of Steel, which is the one wh- that, that uh, uh, after the school bus scene that everyone freaks out about, and and uh, I basically examined it to argue that John Kent was misunderstood in that scene, and you have to wa- watch it in context. I even I edited it in clips from the scene and everything. It's one of my best v- videos, I think. So be sure to check that out. Indie Wednesday, I have an interview with uh, with Galata Comics that's coming out on uh, oh, nice. this this week for Movie Night. We are talking, and Taladia has indicated his pick. We are going to be reviewing Superman Unbound, which is basically the Brainiac storyline from uh, from Superman, which it's and it also includes Supergirl. It's a, such a great storyline and it's accurate to to the comic that I just read, but um. And in terms of under two capes, TBD. What about you, Jay Heat? 
As for me, I will still continue the Batman the Telltale series playthroughs. I will also having a I'll also have a new segment of a little project me and Jared have been working on. So <laughs> that's to be determined, but it'll definitely be out in the coming days. Mm-hmm. Let me just screen share this right quick if you guys don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically, Jay Heat and I are forming our own DC universe now. Oh, wow. Something like that. So I guess you could say it's the dawn of DC. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's the dawn of the New Direction verse. I'll allow it. Yeah, for uh, and again, I've said this before. I love that design of God of Thunder, Wonder Woman. Which is basically Wonder Woman w- w- with Shazam's powers. That just looks I, dope as hell. I think. I think DC ripped you off, Jared. Uh, well, here's the thing. She didn't start off as the goddess of thunder, so it's they, they didn't really they, they didn't invent a new character that's also blonde and is a princess, so there you go. My character is separate <laughs> enough that's not gonna confuse people. That's the point. That's all I care about. Your character is better. Your character is better anyway. My character is better because it's an original character. I love Diana. She's awesome. But okay, I, I didn't have to take powers from someone else and give it to another person. But beyond that, yeah, that's what we got, Nick. So yeah, Jay, he, uh, uh, you, you said what you're doing. So cool. So uh, let's. Uh, so as always, this is Nick Gibson from the Phoenix Press. Uh, and remember, I can only show you the door. You're the one who walked through it. Flame off. <laughs>